Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this Explore, we're going to take a look at how to record data using a date stepper. Let's take a look now. Ooh, here we have, over on the left, a date stepper. Doop, doop, doop. And we're going to make changes to this data so that next time we load the data, refresh, it shows not the current date, but whatever date we saved. Now there's a couple ways we can do this. One is with uh, local storage, which means the date will only be saved on the computer that it was set. And the second way is with a database. So we have to write to the server and uh, uh, set the database and then also receive information from the database as well. Okay, let's go take a look at the date server. We're in Zim date, uh, Zim 9.1. Well, <laughs> Zim date, <laughs> that's the title. There's no such thing as Zim date at the moment. Uh, there was a request for a date picker, and we put together uh, a little date picker, I suppose. Uh, let's take a look at that again. If we increase this to the maximum of 30 for November, when I go to December, it can have 31. If I go back to November, then it drops down to 30 again, and so forth. So it is handling uh, minimum days as well as, uh, or sorry, max days, I guess that would be, <laughs> as well as minimum days, obviously. Uh, one. April 1st! Ah, I can't wait! Oh, I did wait. There, April 1st, 2019. Can't wait. I love April Fool's Day. All right, so a refresh. Right now we're just pulling in the current date. Let's see how we do that. <clears throat> we're setting up a date object. We didn't have to do this, but it will be handy later. With a month, a day, and a year, and we're getting at the month. The month, by the way, is an index from 0 to, to 11. Whereas the day is not an index, it's the numbers 1 to whatever, 31 or what have you. And the year, get full year, just be careful there, get full year is all four numbers. Well, until beyond 9999. Nine, nine. Oh boy, that's going to be a big one then. Mm, I wonder if I'll be alive to test the computers. Uh, anyway. We're setting a style of vertical, all of these steppers will be vertical. We're putting in an array of months and array of maximum days. Ideally this might have been an object of months with value with a property of a max day, probably not a min day. Anyway, no big deal. We've got synchronized arrays. So uh, they have the same number of things and December will have 31 days, etc. So we're making a stepper. The reason why we did put this in a nice array of uh, easy months there is so that now we can provide a list of months for the first stepper. And that will be a, a string stepper then, or a stepper that steps through a list that is a string list. We'll set that to continuous, so that means it will loop. Ba -doop. Uh, as I pull here, there it is looping. I've slowed it down as well. That goes really quickly. Here's how quickly it goes. And you can't even see where the months are, where you are, if it goes too quickly. So we've slowed that down a little bit with, uh, well, a couple things. The hold speed. So if you just hold on it, hold, there's the hold speed. But if you hold and pull, it goes a little bit faster. We've set the sensitivity to 0.5. If you set it to 1, it will go at the hold speed. By default, it's like 0.1 or something, which is meaning it's going at a, a tenth the hold speed, so really quickly. We've also had to say on the string version of these things, down is up. So if you're setting, if you've got an alphabet like the letter A, B, C, A, B, C, D, it just seems more normal than going A, B, C, D. I'm not sure if that's that's the case anyway. Normally when we step through things, I think we, we step down on them. But when we've got numbers, we need to go up. And when we're doing up this way, I think it makes more sense to do up on the months as well. So we reverse the normal direction of a string list um, by setting down forward to false. 
All right, so that's our first stepper. We're centering it, moving it over, and changing, oh, when it changes, we call update date. And that does a few things for us that we'll see. We've set the selected index to the dates month property. Now remember that that is an index, so the date starts with 0 and goes to 11. Uh, that's just how the JavaScript date works, and as a matter of fact, how most date, date objects work out there in the programming world. So month.selectedIndex is that. That's fine, because it's an index. We move to the next stepper, and this one will be of type number and go from 1 to 31. So that's important when you're setting a number to set that, then you can use a min and a max on it. Uh, we're doing the same update date when we make a change. We're centering this one. We're setting the current value. So this is slightly different. It's not the selected index, but it's the current value to the dates dot day. So whatever the day is, say it's the 10th, it will, uh, it will match the current value in the stepper and turn the stepper to a 10. And we're doing roughly the same thing for the year with a minimum and minimum, minimum maximum. And then we're setting the year's current to whatever the date is. Here's what we're doing when we're updating. We're finding out the month's index. The, the, the month is what's going to dictate what we're doing as we make this change. Uh, well, also, when we when we update the date, we'll, we'll want to save that. We're, we're not in the saving mode yet. We'll, we'll, that's what we'll be exploring today. Uh, but we're getting the max at whatever month index it was. So remember the days up here? Days have all the days of the month. So if we're on the first month, or the zero index, we'll get a max of 31 here days at 0 will be 31, and it will tell us the max. <clears throat> there is a leap year as well, unfortunately, so if the month is February, Jan that's January, February, February the 1 index, January the 0 index, and the year is divisible by 4, I didn't bother with the whatever it is, the century uh, leap year thing. <clears throat> Something like every fourth century is leap year. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, then we set the max to 29. Otherwise, the max is whatever we had in there in the days, which was 28. For, for the, and then we're setting the day, the, this is the day stepper's max property to max. And that will ensure that as we change months, the max uh, gets adjusted for the day property. All right. So there's what we have for the basic mm, date stepper, we could call it. And now we want to save this thing. So uh, we can, let's do the local storage first. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. We usually test to see if we have local storage. If local storage, <coughs> I have to get my fingers going. Oh, and I'm so sorry about all those grump rump. Sometimes I forget when we're recording that those grump rumps come out a little loud. <laughs> now, hopefully you're still with me. So if local storage, and sometimes we check to see if local storage and uh, the, we have the, the local storage date, but we're, we're going to set it. So assuming that we have local storage, we are now going to set the date. Local storage dot uh, date is equal to. Now, when we set uh, local storage, it holds a string or a number. It doesn't hold an object. So if we're going to use an object, which we may as well stringify up a, an object that looks like this right here. So we could copy that. Boo, 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 boo. Uh, a couple things, I said, well, put that in there. So we'll set the date to not this thing, but rather we need to now collect the month dot. Month dot selected index and the days 
So this is what's coming from the steppers. The day dot current value and the year dot current value. Current value. All right. So this is the uh, date that we're going to store in local storage so that when we launch our app, we'll check local storage. And if it if it's there, it, it will be a date like that and will be basically the same as, as that and heading forward where we're using the date to get those values. So uh, we can't just say local storage equals date because date is an object. So we need to turn that into a string. The easiest way is json.stringify that date. Uh, JSON is a JavaScript class or uh, also available in very various other languages where it will turn a date into a string. It basically looks like that except it puts quotes around a few things. It's, it's no big deal really. But it is a big deal. It's very handy because other languages also handle JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, also handle JSON. So we can turn our string into objects in those other languages as well, which is handy, like PHP. Or indeed, if we receive the string, we can then parse that to, to turn it back into an object, and that's what we're going to do later. So there we are storing our current date, whatever the, the steppers say, we're storing those in a date property in local storage. Local storage is like an object, that, uh, it's like cookies, it's an object that's available for us that we can store uh, properties in. So we're storing a date property. That could be anything, my date, my date, etc. call it date. All right, great. That's what we do every time we update the date. And now anytime we launch the app, we need to adjust that as well. We're not always going to start afresh like that, but rather we're going to say if there's local storage and if there's local eh, storage dot date. So if there's already a date, we'll use it else we will do that stuff. So okay, there. All right. So if there's local storage, we're going to do this stuff here. If a date already exists, then far date is equal to. Now we can't just say local storage dot date because that's a JSON string we'll want to JSON parse this, json.parse. So now if there is a date there, we parse it. If there isn't a date there, then we make a date from the default uh, date object of well, current the current date. All right, um, just to make sure, uh, here's how to clear local storage, by the way, local storage dot clear. And what that would do is when we run this now, let's open that in a browser, where did my browser go, refresh, November 18th, November 18th, that makes sure that any local storage is from before are cleared or anything like that, if, if you're debugging this, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, we don't want to clear it. However, uh, right now we won't see anything. And are you ready? We change a date to November 20th and we hit refresh. Hey, it says November 20th. Even if we close down and start up again, it will say November 20th. What about October 20th? Yep, refresh October 20th. So that's good. That means it's all working. There is a local storage dot date because we changed it. And that set it down here at the bottom. So as soon as we made a change, we uh, found out what that change was, stored it in date, and then JSON stringified that date, stored it in the local storage dot date. <laughs> you got that? Or do you have to watch this on slow motion? Local store. Okay, you don't need that. Um, 
Alrighty, so that's the easiest way to store things locally, and that can be very handy. You can store collages that way, and as a matter of fact, that's how we store, say, in Zim, we store all the squiggle data if we make squiggles and blobs, and we are putting that into um, a persist, a transform manager, and we're persisting. Uh, oh, and the transforms, if we're transforming a rectangle and a square, and we've got a transform manager going, we use local storage to record that all that data for us. It does mean though that it won't be saved if you go to another computer. Uh, for that we'd have to go to a database. So I've made a database. Let's go take a look and see what that looks like. Here in Danzen made a database uh, that has a well, I'll show you the structure an ID, most things should have an ID that's a key, auto incrementing, a month, a day, and a year all storing integers. And right now we've added manually, we've added uh, a month of the 10th, the day is happens to be 20, although we could update that, and then the date is the uh, <laughs> 2020, Ooh, so far off in the future. Um, we could update that if we wanted to, but we'll do it with the stepper when we get there. All right, so we've got some date in the database in the far off future. We need a PHP page that will uh, handle that data for us, so we've made a PHP page as well. This goes off, uh, so here we are starting in PHP, and this is all on the server. Uh, although this is the local version, if I make a change to this, I have to upload it to the server. Here is a um, uh, access to my username and password stuff where we get into the database. And then we're receiving the month. We're making sure that we're, uh, we're receiving it via get, which means we would put it on the, the command line or the... Uh, uh, we could run this. Shall we run it? Let's run it in the browser, for instance. Boop. Go to zimjs.com slash date, and then we can pass in. So this is on the command line. We can pass in. Sorry, that I can't make that any bigger. Uh, we can pass in the third month. Uh, so March, April, that will be April, and the 20th day of 2010 or something like that and I hit enter and uh, let's see if that updated our database. So we hit browse and what did we pass in 2010? Yep, uh, do we even have a 2000? I don't think we do on the stepper we don't so we better, better change that pass it into a 2019. Check this again. Now it's updated to a 2019 uh, day of 20 month third month. All right, so if we were to pass to date.php the following information, a month, a day, and a year, then that will update our database. So we're getting the month as, as follows. That's how PHP gets a month. Uh, we're checking to see if that exists. If it does exist, then we set the or then we set dollar sign month, which is our way to store variables. Dollar sign month is equal to whatever is in the month. Otherwise, we set it to nothing. And you may get an error if you try and use something that doesn't exist. So we're checking to make sure it exists first. And then same with the day and the year. If the month doesn't exist. So if there is no month, then we're assuming that we're getting data and that will actually get the data. Shall we try that? So if there's no month, if we don't pass anything and just ask for the date, then it, it gets what was in there. And sure enough, that information looks like it's the right information. I can't make that a bit bigger. That looks like that's the right information. Month, third month, 20 and 2019. Is that right? 2019, okay. Hit the adjustment there. Good. Um, so we're calling, if there is no month, we're calling or we're setting up a select from the date test. This then runs that select and we're fetching the array. This is all MySQL 
instead of MySQL. I uh, have moved in most part to MySQL I, but I didn't bother using it this time. And then based on that row data that we get, this is the result from the database. Based on that, we're putting the month into dollar sign month, the day into dollar sign day, and the year into dollar sign year. And we're echoing back an async call. So Zim's got async, and we'll look at this on the Zim side. The way that we hook up async, async is like Ajax, if you've ever heard of Ajax, or all these acronyms, huh? Ajax, asynchronous, asynchronous JavaScript, and XML, which you don't even have to send XML, but uh, that's been around for some time, I suppose, although became popular not too long ago, maybe eight years ago or something like that. Everybody started using Ajax. Uh, another version, uh, it's not a version, another way to do it other than Ajax or asynchronous JavaScript is um, a thing called JSONP, where we create a script file and pass in a call to a function through that script call. And that it has less security problems, or not problems, issues uh, when when working with it. Uh, you can use cross-domain and stuff like that more easily. So we're using JSONP, but we've wrapped up JSONP in Zim Async. And uh, here is what your script would need to return. A call to async, followed by whatever function you've set up on, on the Zim side. So I'll show you I'll show you that uh, in a moment. We'll, we'll build that. Followed by some data. So the data we're passing back is an object with a month, a day, and a year that holds the month, a day, and a year. In the second case, where we do have a month coming in, where we're, we're in other words, where we're submitting data, in the second case, we're updating the date test and we're setting the month to the month and the day to the day. Uh, this helps avoid uh, MySQL injection, which if you use MySQL, you don't have to do this anymore. You do something else. You bind, um, bind properties. But anyway, there they all are in the old way where the ID is uh, one. So in this case, we have just one uh, bit of data. You may have a player, uh, if you're using this at some point in a game or something, you may have a player ID and you'll have to do that database stuff a little bit differently, I would imagine, because you probably won't have just one value. But we've only got one value in there and we're that's the only thing we're using. In other words, everybody around the world, when they use this date picker, <laughs> will be setting that single date. So you can play with that and see, you know, you know, set it on some computer over here, go to a different computer, and hey, it's going to be the date you set. Oh, you're the master date setter. Woohoo! Everybody will be fighting to set the date. Uh, anyway, yes, I'm sure. So uh, in this case, we're, we're updating that single date in there. We're, that sends the query. All this did was put the query into a variable. Uh, but then we send that variable off to our database connection. And we're echoing back this time a set data and then our result. So that result will either be 0 or 1. 0 if it doesn't work, 1 if it does work. Whereas here, we're async calling get data. And this is the data that we've gotten. Here, we're async calling set data. And, and we're getting the result once we set the data. So that's what the PHP looks like. And what I'll do is I'll copy this. Copy. And we'll move this into the very bottom of date here. And comment that out. This won't work very well here. So that when you look at the date.html page, you have an example of my PHP. We can say connect to data. Database. Oh, database. <laughs> All right, that will be in there if you view this page in the Explorer thing. See that? Because if you tried to see the PHP page, it won't show you it. All right. And then how do we do this? So if we're going to set, we'll no longer be using local storage. 
if we're going to use async, then we need to collect, um, uh, or we need to use the async URL and stuff like that. And that looks like this. So async, like so. Let's go off to the docs and see the structure. Boop. Zim docs async. So we need some URL and then a call back. And there's a couple examples in here. If you are using an existing service that already ex oops. <laughs> yeah, what happened there? Interesting. If you're using an existing service that already exists, like uh, some API, the JSON, um, and then you can put in a callback async test and then pass that. So we're, we're not, um, that passes in the function that this is the local function. You would have a function, for instance, right here, a local function called test. You'll receive data. And that's saying, please, uh, this is the function that you're going to call. But you also need to pass that in as a callback. Uh, often these JSONP places have a callback, and you would pass that as well into the callback. But we're not doing that system. That would be if you're trying to use a service that already exists. For instance, you could do uh, go to a Google API, and you could do searches from within Zim. So if, whatever you type into Zim, uh, you would do an async call out to the Google services and set the callback and receive the search results back from Google and put them into a list or something like that. So we've done things like that. There's an, a weather example where we go off and get the weather with, um, with this. So now uh, we're doing, though, our own server script. So we've got our own server script. And this is instructions on what to put in the server. So there's an example with a PHP echoing back. That's what we just saw. Here's an example with a, a Node.js Express calling um, or sending back a, a result. So that's with Node.js Express example. But we're interested now in what we're doing on the client side. We already looked at what we were doing on the server side. So here on the client side, we pass in the URL to the server with whatever whatever data we want to send in, in the normal CGI format. So this is question mark ID equals 72, ampersand name equals Dan. Those are the things that show up in your uh, get I don't remember how we were doing it here, right there. So basically, we're doing that in an async call. So I'll copy that. That's what we want to do in our async in a string, like so. Except we don't always want to say month, day, or these months, days, and years. We could try that. Maybe it's a good idea when you're building this stuff out to hard code something and make it a bit simpler, see if it works, and then put in the more dynamic things. So let's see if we set this to the how about the uh, fifth month, uh, or well, it will be the sixth month, and five there as well, and 2025. What did we go up to in our stepper? A max of, yeah, so it'll handle 2025. Okay, so we're hard coding in some data. Uh, now let's see if that's all there is to do with async. I think there's one more thing. And then comma, mm, darn, <laughs> don't want to do that. Comma, the my function as the second URL. So there's async, the URL, and then whatever your function is that you want to call. And then you'll need a local function that will handle that stuff. So, uh, oh, we already had that, didn't we? We already had that named. If you recall, that was down here. When we're updating, so this is us updating and putting the month and year and day in. When we're updating, we want set data. So this is the name of the function that we need to make here now. Use it there, set data, semicolon, 
and then function set data. We'll receive some data, or we'll receive um, some information back. Uh, we could say result, maybe would be better. And then we can zog the result, zog result. Like so. so we set up a local function that will be called when this one finishes. So this will be run, and in this PHP page, the echo of async set data. So there's the set data and we'll receive the result. We will receive either a zero or a one coming into here. And we're going to zog it. Woohoo! All right, so that's all being done an update date. We're no longer doing a local storage thing. So we're gonna have some sort of, we're, when it, whatever we change with the number stepper, unfortunately, we're always going to give this date to the database we should get a result back of one. If we see one, we can go look at the database and see if this command inserted this data into the database. And then follow that by, set, by calling that function for us. So if you think about it, on the server side, or sorry, on the client side here, when we update something, we tell the PHP to update that data and call that function when you're done. Here's the function, and it's telling us the result. I mean, I don't think you can really get much easier than that. If we wanted to, we could put a function literal right in here, I think. Probably could have. Oh, maybe not, because we have to call a specific function. That's right. Uh, we probably could do that, but then you wouldn't have the ability to call back different functions. Anyway, let's save this. So we save that, and we refresh here locally it should work still oh that's important we we had made those changes locally i hadn't updated them to the server so when we're looking here yeah that's local all right so we save this and i make any change it doesn't really matter let's see if we got back a result f12 two ones that's good news two ones came back uh, so every time i make a change here we get a one coming back let's go check the database and we browse here, One, uh, 5, 5, 2025, yay. So this just updated the database. We could do a little check, we could say 6. So this is now the sixth month. Do a refresh here on the date, make a change, boop. We get a one back, you go to the database, hit the browse again, and it's the sixth month. Good. So we're connected up, making a change to the database via these get variables that are collected by our PHP. All right, now on the other side, we want to find out what's coming in. So we come up to the top here and we say, no, 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 no to the local storage. Uh, maybe I'll double comment that if I can. Yeah, there we go. Right, so we don't bring the values in via the local storage, but rather we bring the values in from our async result. So async, we call that same URL. But this time we don't put pass any data to it. we don't have any data we're asking for the data so that's why in our PHP or in our PHP here if we don't pass in any month day or year we'll get nothing for the month and therefore it knows to select from the data get all of the data and return and call a get data function so uh, async and not Oh, that's that async, we want the earlier async. There it is, async. And this one was called set data, like that. And hence we need a function called set data here. Uh, this will be fairly important. This will be our data coming back. So based on this data, we will know the stuff that was sent to us. If you take a look here. 
async, we're going to receive a, an, uh, an object literal that looks like that. This is what we'll receive with the proper month, the day, and the year, whatever that, that is. That's what we'll get sent back to get data. And as a matter of fact, that's just what the date is. If you take a look at the date, the date is an object literal with a month, a day, and a year. So we can do uh, var date is equal to data. You could grab each of those individually. Uh, you could ask for data dot month, data dot day, data dot year, and put them in an object literal and store them in the date. But that's what it already is. <laughs> so it becomes fairly simple. Now, we can't go on and do all this stuff, though, until we have this date. So there's no point in doing any of this. So we'll grab that stuff, including the stage.update, cut it, and put it right inside this function. There we go. So now when we receive the data and we put that data in the date, as we come into here, it will get the data, the date from, or the month from our, our data, from the date. See how that connects up? Okay, so we save this and run it, a refresh, bloop, refresh. Async.getData is not a function. Async.getData. Where do we have an async.getData? Set data. Did I call this set data? I did. Oops. Get data. Okay. So, sorry, that's the function. Get data and get data there as well. Yes. Sorry, uh, when we called the async, we were supposed to call get data. Because remember, so the error message, is, there's a problem in the error message because the PHP is calling this one right here. Oopsie, right, Where's the, which one's the get data? Right there, it's calling get data. That's being called in a, in a JavaScript function that is inserted by, uh, by the system, by, by Zim's async. So that didn't exist, and yet we were calling it. And you should have caught me out on that. Were you all at home going, no, 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 not set data, not set data, get data. Were you saying that to me? I hope you were. That means you're paying attention. <laughs> all one of you left listening to this. All right, we refresh here, July 5th, 2025. We look in the database. Uh, six month is really the seventh month because the index starts at zero. So that's July 5th. 2025. And let's see if we've got the round trip. Round trip is uh, we can change this. Look, we every time we change it, we're getting some ones to April 1st. Let's get to April 1st. Uh, 2019. And now we refresh. No, <laughs> it didn't work. <coughs> Excuse me. I refresh that again. It's, it's still giving us a July 5th. So something bad happened. All right, let's go back and take a look and see what our database has in it. <coughs> Excuse me, I got the grumblies again. And we hit the browse. Uh, the month six, five, so yeah, that's not changing. Did I see ones changing? I thought I saw ones as I was going and that's, oh, ah, oh, right. <laughs> Do you know what it is? <laughs> you remember what it is? We hard code it down here. We, every time we make a change, we are hard coding that date. So of course it's not going to work. In other words, our last step is we have to put in the values that are coming from the number picker or the, <clears throat> the stepper, sorry. All right, so for the month, that's, that's pretty easy. Uh, for the month, we delete this and we put in two quotes and we put in two pluses. Now JavaScript's become a, what do they call that again? Uh, templating language, which means we could uh, use um, single back ticks here and, and insert these variables uh, via that way. But we'll go old school on it. So we're uh, 
anytime you want to replace that, all, all you do is replace it with this. So that's the day, and here's the year. And then you slip the year variable or whatever we're using for the year in there, and you slip the day in there and the month in there. So to get, get the month, we are doing this one, month.selectedIndex. Popped right in there. To get the day, we're doing this one, day.currentValue, and that pops right in there. And to get the year, we copy that, and that one pops right in here, like that. And if you can't quite see that, you're welcome to drop it down on multiple lines, or something like that. <coughs> Whatever. I think that will work. Okay, now let's uh, do a refresh on our local here. Back to that July 5th. And one more time, we will try and bring ourselves to the April 1st. We are getting ones. And we got ones before, but we were hard coding the date we were sending. April 1st. Da, da, da. And bring this down to 2019. And we refresh. Boop. April 1st, 2019. Woohoo! And this is what you will see, well, unless somebody else has changed this date. So if you go to the Zim site, once we upload this to the server, if you go to the Zim site and try out this date thing, uh, it would be left at whatever happened to be entered into the database there. So we'll make sure that we up upload this, connected, and uh, off she goes. Let me make sure that my remote is working properly. Yep, it uploaded to the server. And so now if we look on the server, so we'll change this to the server, HTTPS colon uh, slash slash zimjs.com slash explore slash date. Mm. Oh, my uh, async is going to HTTP instead of HTTPS. Oh, let's update that. HTTPS. Upload that onto the server. And yeah, let's try that again. Boop. April 1st, 2019. So that is on the server, whereas before we were looking at it locally, and both of those are telling us the same date. And that is pretty cool. All right, and that is a an explore here at zimjs.com. Are, are you excited? Um, I think so. Oh yeah, let's head on back to the explore page here where we got that. Whoa. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. Wasn't that fun exploring through a bunch of data? Uh, come on in to Zim at zimjs.com and hang out with us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Ciao.